everyone. Are you enjoying Mobile Suit Gundam the Witch from Mercury? Episode 22 was quite a fascinating story, wasn't it? Although it served as a sort of prelude to the climax of the story, it had some very intriguing aspects. Let's focus on the scene where Slector takes control of the Gundam Caliber and battles the Gang Lord. Firstly, there's the unique large beam cannon. You can see that it's designed with a motif of a witch's broom. Very stylish, isn't it? We can understand that this beam cannon is equipped with a powerful thruster. With this powerful thruster, it charges into the swarm of Gang Lord. Its appearance is reminiscent of a comet. By the way, in Japanese, the word for mercury is pronounced suisei, which is also the pronunciation for comet. Interesting, isn't it? While avoiding the attacks of the Gang Lord, the Gundam Calibran advances. Did you notice anything unique about its movement in this scene? The truth is the Calibran doesn't stop at all in this scene. From this, we can understand that it's a mobile suit that excels at charging with its large thruster of course. Holding amidst countless gang node would be extremely dangerous. It's a scene where Slector's technique of calmly assessing the capabilities of the mobile suit and the battlefield situation shines. Slector not only evades but also counterattacks. While swiftly maneuvering, she chooses her targets and destroys them with a single blow. We can see that Slector, through her experiences in the story so far, has awakened to her abilities as an ace pilot. Let's closely observe the scene where Slector counterattacks. Did you notice that the beam emitted from the Gang Node is singular? The Gang Node also uses attacks involving the Gambit. The Gambit emits four beams at once. This Gambit does not behave like the Elio, flying around in all directions to attack. This is merely my speculation. Elio bought the Elio. Remote pre operates the Gang node. The Gambit is being launched from that Gang node due to Elio's signals being distant. It might be difficult to perform complex maneuvers. In this battle scene, a distinctive feature is that the Gambit's beams, emitted from the Gang node, are always fired in a set of four, and in the scenes where the Caliber counterattacks, it reduces to a single beam. What do you think is the weakness of the Gambit? The truth is, there is a moment when the Gambit must replenish its energy. Even in the scenes where the Elio used the Gambit, there were instances where it returned to the main body to recharge. Slector understood the Gambit's weakness. At the start of the battle, she put all her efforts into avoiding the beams from the Gambit using Caliburn's mobility. Then she waits for the moment when the Gambit's energy is depleted in the meantime. While taking evasive actions, she identifies the enemy's location and considers which target to attack and how to do so. She then shifts to attack the moment she notices the cessation of the attacks from the Gambit, and only the beams from the Gang node are being fired. Don't you think that's a very powerful technique? Moreover, the battle between Slector and Caliburn continues. It's revealed that the Caliburn's beam cannon is capable of continuous long-time emission. It's as if it's using a long beam saber. A similar style of combat is executed by a mobile suit called Rezzle in Gundam Unicorn. The decisive difference between the Rezzle's pilot and select is their abilities. The Rezzo's pilot uses it against a single enemy unit. The battle strategy was to compensate the inability to destroy with a single shot by using the rifle's function. On the other hand, Slector destroys three gun nodes with the same beam functionality. Although it's a comparison across different works, this scene helps us understand the difference between a regular pilot and an ace pilot. Moreover, there's another critical factor we must not forget. Slector performs this attack while evading. By now, Slector has become a powerhouse on par with the protagonists of previous Gundam series. C. Bucano from Gundam F91 also destroys multiple enemies with a single shot. 
But that's not the only cool moment for Swetan. The Gand Nordi prize a beam saber and approaches Caliburn. It's reminiscent of General Grievous from Star Wars Episode E. Slector responds to this attack by presenting the left side of Caliburn. This stance is taken to prevent the beam cannon from being destroyed and losing the crucial mobility. Such decisions are made in an instant, even when the enemy's attack is imminent. The enemy uses four beam sabers, and there are other gun nodes in the vicinity. Ideally, she would want to escape from this situation quickly. So Slector uses Caliburn's head-mounted Vulcan gun to destroy the Gand Nose additional equipment. There's a comment that frequently appears in my mobile suit commentary videos it. Although the head-mounted Vulcan gun isn't a very powerful weapon, an experienced pilot can use it to destroy an enemy unit's weakness. This time Slector's usage exemplifies the content told in the lecture. Let me add more information. Slector destroys the Gand Nose additional equipment, not the main body. Whether she made this choice after designing the Gand Nose strength is unclear. However, the Gand Node, after its additional equipment is destroyed, becomes sluggish in discarding the damaged equipment. Not missing this opportunity, Slector shoots down the Gand Node. What did you think? The scenes where Slector fights, understanding the characteristics of the Gundam Caliburn, are truly exciting young day. Moreover, it was her first time aboard the Gundam Caliburn. Can you operate the machine as skillfully as an expert the first time you use it? Think about the car game or machine you use at work you can understand how challenging it would be. The Witch from Mercury will soon come to its conclusion. I wonder how it will end. And there's a classic event in the Gundam series. It's the event where a giant object is about to fall to Earth. In episode 22, it was revealed that Quiet Zero can move. What do you think will happen? Please let me know in the comments if you'd like. Lastly, don't you want to hop into the Caliburn and sew around like a comet? In fact, the subscribe button you see on your screen is the switch to increase your permeability score. By pressing the like button and the bell button, your permeability score will increase even more. Let's test whether you have the aptitude to ride the Gundam Caliburn. Let's meet again in the next lecture.